Hey guys, in this video, I want to give kind of a general overview of the push-based networking model that, as far as I know, I think it's in Unreal Engine 4, like a late version, like 4.27. I'm not 100% sure which, but anyways, I know it's in UE5, and it should be used in kind of the same manner either way, at least as far as I know. But anyways, what I want to cover is kind of the general uses of it, how to use it, reasons to use it, and then give you some examples using the net profiler on, I guess, just kind of what everything's kind of doing. But I also want to show some brief options. It'll be relatively quick of some things you might not be aware of, but we'll cover that here in a second. So what I'm doing is in my uh, com actor component here, this is where we're going to create our variable. It's going to be a simple integer. We're going to be able to set it through blueprint as well as set it through a just a simple function call. Actually, we're just going to do a, a read write property. That'll be it. Then we're going to have that be using onRep. So it's going to fire off a function. That function is going to simply print out a, well, the value of it. So that'll give us a good overview on what's happening. Now, first thing you need to do is one, make sure you actually have the pushed metal set. So for example, if I enter the console command, net dot is push model enabled, it should state true. If yours does not state true, you either need to go through and set it to one or true, just like here, or Better yet, because doing it this way, you'd have to set it every single time you launch a project. We need to go into our default engine, and we want to confirm and set net is push model enabled to true here. Okay, now let's begin. So first thing we want is that read write replicated property. So you property, we're going to do blueprint read write. I can spell blueprint right, and we want it to be replicated using which will be a function we set here in a bit. We're going to do, uh, let's do int32, replicated, or what do you, my replicated property. And we'll just leave it to zero. Then we need our replicated function, so our, well, our onrep function. So you function, onrep, let's just call it my replicated property. And inside of here, the only thing we're doing is printing out the value of my replicated property. So let's set the on rep like here and print it out. So log, log temp, warning, my replicated property value, and my replicated property. So that'll take care of that. Next up, we need to go over to our .cpp and find our get lifetime replicated props function. You should already have this. This is not a, I guess you could say a beginner networking tutorial. This is just kind of a uh, general overview. So anyways, if you're doing replication, you should already know what I'm doing. But basically the old way is you have do rep, yeah, do rep lifetime and you pass in the variable you want and basically the condition of the replication. This is done in the same way with the push based but we need extra parameters to build a kind of set. So we have a couple additional macros. So if we type in do rep lifetime with params, you'll see three options here. So the only thing that I know of difference wise between with params and with params fast is with params fast, we'll go ahead and basically assume that the property is marked replicated, whereas with params will not. I'm not 100% sure on this or any other differences, but generally, you are kind of authoritative over, hey, I'm marking this as replicated because I want to replicate it, so just use params fast, but I'm sure there are more use cases out there. And it doesn't help that documentation is, like with a lot of things, minimal. Anyways, from here, use it in the same way. So C is class, so USKG inventory manager component, then our variable, and lastly, we need our params. So what are our params? So F, do rep lifetime params, if you see here, we have condition. So that'll be like our only, yeah, owner only, skip owner, initial only, that kind of thing. So we can set that there. But the main one we want is, is pushed base. We want to set that to true. And lastly, I want to discuss at the end, or I guess probably up here soon, the rep notify condition. So here is going to be by default on changed. So we're going to set that again to rep notify condition or rep notify on change. That's going to be the value of our enum. So there's our two. Okay. And lastly, I actually do want to make a C++ version of the setter. So void 
actually I want to call it from blueprint. So blueprint callable, we're going to do void. Let's do set my replicated variable and give it a new value. Like so. And then all we do in here is one, we confirm we are, again, we have authority. So if has authority. And because I'm in an actor component, I wrote the has authority function. And all it does is it gets the owner. If it's valid, checks its authority. Otherwise, it returns false. So once we know we have authority, here we want to set my replicated property to equal oops, the new value. And that'll go ahead and change it. Now we are 90% done. The very last thing we need to do is include net core in our private or public, again, depends on your project, uh, dependencies. So that allow us to mark the property as dirty. But since we're set up, I want to go ahead and show you the difference between marking it as dirty and without, and kind of what all, I guess you could say, happens. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and launch, and we should be, for the most part anyways, good to go. Alrighty, so now in Blueprint, here I just have a basic example. So when I press R, I make a call to the server, so I'm on the server now via RPC, and I simply call the set my replicated variable function. That's all. So when I hit play, if you recall, I moved this to the uh, .cpp. This should fire when my replicated property replicates. So I press R, and I'm pressing it, and nothing's happening. So the old way, if we're not using push base, so for example, if I just, you know, set it to false, uh, let's see if uh, this breaks Unreal or not. I don't think I've ever actually tried to change that with live coding. Right, so now when I press R, again, I'm playing as client. Now you can see my variable just replicated, or it printed out 10. So it actually went through and it fired the onrep. So that indicates that, hey, we have received the replication. So I'm going to revert that back to true and discuss why. So the differences between the, I guess, the traditional, whatever way you want to call it, and the push base is with the traditional, pretty much it's going through all your actors, your components, and parsing through your replicated variables. What it wants to check is, okay, has the variable changed? So it kind of does that automatically. So when we're not using push base, this is what it's doing. It's going through, it's checking, you know, is this replicated variable, has it changed? If it has, it marks it as dirty. If it hasn't, then we pretty much skip it and move on to the next variable. This is where the advantages of the push base comes in. Instead of, you know, the server having to go through and check all this on its own constantly, we instead tell it, hey, we want to mark this property as dirty. So now it can go through and do its comparison to see, okay, do I need to replicate this? So instead of it doing it all the time and marking it as dirty itself, we kind of tell it when to mark it as dirty, so to speak. So when we tell it to mark it as dirty, that's when it starts doing its comparison. And when it changes, then it'll replicate down to clients. So we can do that by doing mark property dirty. And in this case, we're gonna do from name. And here we need the class. So USKG inventory manager component, then our property. So my replicated property and then the object that is replicating. So that'll be this, so our own component. So if you recall, I set push base back to true where it did not fire the on route. And let's check it. Alrighty, so I'm back again and I'm in my character. Everything's the same. So let's check it. So I press play, I press R, and you can see it now prints out from our on rep function. So our variable did replicate. So the only difference between the old one when it didn't replicate and the new one is we simply mark the property as dirty ourselves as shown by this line. So what do we do from here? Uh, I, I don't know why I'm even saying that, but anyways, the only thing I want to do now, aside from before we kind of show in the profiler, which is basically going to just kind of show what I just said, is I want to cover this rep notify condition here. So right now we have it set to on changed. So what that does is as you can see, well, initially anyways, the value is set to zero. So default, zero. Here I'm setting it to 10. So the value is changing. So on the client, when it receives the new value, it does go ahead and, well, print out 10. So, but it's only going to do this if the values change. So for example, on the client, if the value is, you know, still 10, then it is not going to fire the on-ramp. So what I can do to really kind of 
I guess confirm that, is here I have my replicated property as blueprint read write. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my replicated property. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to 10 before the server does. So on the client, my replicated property is going to equal 10. Then the server is going to set it to 10. And we're going to see what happens. So I hit play. I press R. And I'm spamming it. And nothing's happening. So that's kind of the indication, or not the indication, but uh, the use case of this. So in some cases, you might, you know, if the variable has already equaled what you want to replicate, like such as the client trying to, I guess, predict something or run its own logic, then great. We don't need to run any additional logic. No re need to, you know, rerun a function that it might be trying to call anyways. But in some cases, we might not want that. We might want it to run all the time. So that would be the case of rep notify always. And what this will do is even though I'm setting the value to 10 before the server sets it to 10, so by the time it receives the replication, the value is still, again, 10. It's not changing. It will go through and it will still fire the on rep like it just did. So that's quite convenient. Now, what we can go ahead and do is, I guess, show you some basic things in the net profiler, some kind of general I guess you could say uh, differences. So what we're going to do is I'm going to revert this to not be pushed based. I'm going to make it as normal and simply comment out the mark property from dirty, or uh, mark property as dirty, and go from here. So let me go ahead and recompile and relaunch, and I'll see you in a second. Alrighty, so back in the editor, I want to show two different cases of, well, I guess two of the same anyways, of the initial property, I guess, replication. So initially, if a property differs, you know, from its, let's say, constructed value. So remember, we're setting this guy to zero in our header. Then no matter what, the property is going to be marked dirty. So that's kind of like that, as you'd say, uh, the initial change, so to speak. So for example, here I have it set where I set the property to five on begin play, again, so on the server. And we are not using push base. So no matter what, it should replicate down. So if I hit play, start recording, and go ahead and stop. You can see either way we did receive the replication. And that can be kind of viewed over by looking here. So we go to our test character, my replicated property, count one. So it replicated to us once. So we know that we did receive the replication. And you'll find the exact same thing even if you set the or set it to true to be push base. So this is something that I had an issue with trying to understand because I didn't realize that the property I meant to actually uh, start the recording. There we go. Because I didn't think that it would initially be marked dirty to replicate. And that ended up causing me a lot of headache and a big refactor that was unnecessary in something. But anyways, here we are currently using the push base. And even though I didn't mark it as dirty anywhere, we can see that my replicated property did in fact replicate. So that's where we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the begin play logic and still using the push based, we're going to use the set my replicated variable. So again, when I press R, which I have made a change and I'll show you here in a second, all we do is we make our way to the server and server simply, yeah, simply sets the value to 10. So I wanna press play, everything's fine and dandy. I press R and nothing's happening. I'll go ahead and I'll just spam R. So I press it about 10 times. And did I actually record? No, I did not. So I'm going to do it one more time. So spam R, press it about 10 times, and disable. And if we look at the profiler here, currently see that we don't have any of the property. That, actually, we should have more. Did nothing show? That's neat. I know none of these, sh none of these should. But, all right, let me try one more time. All right, spamming R and disable. There we go. All right, so as you can see, we do not have our my replicated variable shown in this list here. So even though I was spamming R and the server was setting the value, it was never actually replicating down to the clients. So if I were to set it again, not to be pushed based, 
it would, as you can kind of expect. But same deal. If I mark it as dirty, then when I spam R or press R, we should receive that replication. Now I'm going to press it five times, and you'll see an example of what I'm talking about here in a second. So one, two, three, four, five, and disable. We will only see it replicate once. So it still kind of internally uses the same kind of, okay, I don't know why I didn't show everything else this time, it uses the same kind of system. So for example, here we have my replicated property. I set it to 10 five times, but the replication count is still only one. So even though it only replicated once, we were marking it as dirty, you know, five times. So only when the value has actually changed, even though a variable might be marked dirty, will it go through and actually replicate down to clients. So for example, if I do a little flip-flop, where the first time we run it, we set it to 10, next time we'll set it to 15, and then we'll 10, 15, 10, 15, so on and so on. So one, two, three, four, five. So now we should see it every single time the client has received verification. So here we can see the count is now five. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20. 20 bytes, size of four bytes each time for an integer. That makes sense. So that's kind of the general, I guess, overview. Uh, push based is, it is more efficient. I would recommend using it from that aspect alone. And that's kind of why this entire system and a lot of my stuff is actually being converted over to use it. Now that all my stuff is officially on UE5. It is a little bit more complex and a little bit more error prone, but it shouldn't be that hard to necessarily figure it out because if you know, okay, something's not replicating, all you really got to do is just go back to wherever you set the value and you can kind of figure it out from there. Like, okay, maybe I marked, I forgot to mark this as dirty after I set it, you know, here. Something like that. It's not really more complicated to use. Once you use it once, it's kind of like the replication system. You learn it once, you, you don't really forget it. And this one is a heck of a lot simpler to learn in addition to the replication system. But... Yeah, it has its benefits because we tell it when we want it to replicate. Well, not necessarily render replicate, but uh, when we want to mark the property as dirty. And then the system handles, okay, when has it changed? If it has changed, we replicate it, and it is no longer marked as dirty. And it does this still by tracking on a per-connection basis, so it still handles, you know, as long as you mark it as dirty, it still works in the kind of the same way you would expect with the traditional system. Right, uh, I'm relatively new to it. I don't know if I made any mistakes. I probably did, like I do with everything in life. Uh, but, yeah, if I made any mistakes, let me know in the comments, please. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this was beneficial to, you know, one person. I 